Guys, there's something so unique, special, and magical about Japanese books. I mean, whenever I read a work of Japanese fiction or literature, I literally feel like I've been transported to a different world altogether, a very fantasy ridden and surreal universe. You know, it's almost reading like a work of science fiction, even if the book is literally not a science fiction. Now, of course, I've been reading all the Japanese books in English because I cannot read the original Japanese. But even the way, even in translation, you know, I think that original quality of the language is retained, that sense of、uh, mysticism, you know, that sense of、uh, secrecy and that sense of fantasy. And the language is very poetic. So, you know, I think the way,、uh, I do not know how to call it, but there's a very、uh, sort of like, you know, An otherworldly quality in the language of the Japanese novels, even though I'm reading them in English. So, I'm a big, big fan of Japanese literature. And I've read a lot of Haruki Murakami's works, Haruki Murakami's novels, as well as his short stories. But today, I want to review a, Japan- a book by a different Japanese author. I'm going to talk about Before Your Memory Fades by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. Before Your Memory Fades by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. So, guys, I just finished reading this book and I'm absolutely in love with this book, and I'm going to briefly tell you why in this review. So, guys, Toshikazu Kawaguchi is a very famous Japanese author of Before the Coffee Gets Cold series, and this is the third and the latest book in Before the Coffee Gets Cold series. The plot of this book itself is very novel. I think the kind which you haven't probably seen in any of world fiction before. The setting of the novel is a small cafe in a small town of Japan. On the looks of it, it looks like you know, an usual touristy cafe where people just come and go. People come here to either pass time or have a good time. Mostly people come to this cafe either in the mornings before work to you know, grab a cup of coffee and grab a bite of something. Or they come here to relax after work. But there's something special and unique about this cafe. Now, what is that unique thing? It is the fact that it is a time traveling cafe. In this cafe, there's a special chair, and once you are seated on that chair, and coffee is poured to you in a special way by a certain member of a Japanese clan. Remember that the coffee cannot be poured to you by just anybody, but it is a specific person from a specific clan. Who pours you that cup of coffee, and as you sit in that chair and that coffee is poured to you, you get transported to your past. You can travel back to your past. Now, the interesting thing here is that it's not just, you know, that anybody randomly can walk in the cafe and travel back to their past. Only people who have visited that cafe at least once previously are eligible for this kind of service. So, as you sit in the chair and coffee is poured, you know, it's literally like the whole. The whole depiction is literally like a science fiction movie. You know, there are fumes, and you feel like you're melting, and you're transported back in time. Now, the fun thing here is that, of course, when you're moving back in time, you are not going and meeting that other person from the past anywhere else, but in the same cafe. So, you are transported back to the same cafe, maybe 10 years back, 15 years back, a couple of years back. So, like I said, the condition. For you to move back in time and meet that person from the past is that both of you need to have、uh, visited the cafe at some point of time. Only then that past recreation will take place. Also, another condition here is that you can visit the past, you can visit people from your past, you can travel back into your past, you know, talk to them and share your regrets, you know, memories or whatever, but you cannot change the present. So, if somebody has obviously, if you're visiting somebody from the past who has died, who is no more with you, you can visit that person and you know, have a conversation with them, maybe share your regrets, confess your love to them, or whatever. But of course, that person would not come alive. So, this is the condition. The whole concept of you know, people visiting their pasts in a cafe, I just found it so interesting, weird, and mind boggling that I was completely glued to, glued to this book from the beginning to the end. And mostly people are using this service to, of course, visit dead people, people, you know, their relatives, their friends, husband, wife, whoever, who no longer exist in this world. So if they have to confess something to them, you know, or if there is some regret they still have, they want to share with those people, they're visiting the past to meet those dead people. So the whole feeling, you know, the whole、uh, sort of atmosphere of people meeting dead people and, you know, then coming back to the present, realize that those dead people cannot be alive, it can get a bit overwhelming, unsettling, and it can also sound a bit macabre at times. 
but the overall the way the novel uh, is structured you know then there's a lot of humor also so it kind of balances that uh, macabre part but like i said the whole thing of people visiting the past and you know meeting dead people can be a bit uh, unsettling for some people so i would say there's a sense of melancholy you know which pervades the pages of before the memory fades and many shades and many emotions out here but the main sense that you get is a sense of uh, melancholy you know the sense of life passing by as you sit in the cafe and sip a cup of coffee the sense of you know the fact that you cannot actually you know grasp you cannot actually change the past and you know the whole thing about you know the the whole thing which we talk about in indian philosophy as well the whole thing about transience of life as you Uh, live the life so the whole message is to seize the present moment and to not have any regrets so like i said the book operates at a number of levels the cafe thing is just a metaphor for many things the book has many uh, philosophical connotations so there's a sense of melancholy but it is a very sweet kind of mel- melancholy you know it is not the kind of book what i'm trying to say is that it's not the kind of book which would make you feel depressed by the end of it a lot of sad things have happened in the novel a lot of sad things have happened in the book but uh, it is a kind of melancholy which gives you a sense to strongly come to terms with your own existence and to accept the reality of your life uh, with a smile on your face so that when you have visited your past and you are back to the present and you walk out of the cafe you get a better grip on your life and you have this feeling that even though you know you're sad you're pained because of the death of a loved one but your life has to go on because you want to see that loved one one happy in the heaven or wherever else they are so it's a beautiful beautiful book the book is divided into different chapters in the beginning of course Uh, you get the whole setting of the cafe and you are introduced to the characters who are a part of the cafe people who work at the cafe you're introduced to their lives how their lives are interconnected i don't want to reveal much about the plot because then it will become like a summary and i want you guys to actually read the book the subsequent chapters talk about different characters tell you about the lives of different characters who come to the cafe to travel to the past so each each chapter you know sketches the story of a particular character or a particular set of characters and how it turns out to be after they have visited their past one more thing that i should mention here it's very interesting is that you can use the cafe to visit your past but you can also visit your present so if somebody from the past you know uh, sort of decides to meet somebody who is sitting at the cafe in the present they just pop up in that chair out of nowhere and you know they meet that person who is there in the present so like i said it's very interesting very mind boggling almost like reading a science fiction book or watching a science fiction movie another thing which i found very fascinating about you know the book this book and the whole cafe thing is the fact that it kind of upturns the whole general symbolism of a cafe you know generally what do we associate a cafe with at a general level cafe is a place where we come to escape our daily realities we just you know go there have a cup of coffee maybe have a casual conversation with uh, some people have some casual uh, chit chat and then you know escape our reality and then we go back to the real world to come face to face with these realities again but here this thing is completely you know upturned the cafe is the place we actually enter to come face to face with the demons of your past you time travel into the past and you know uh, you kind of come face to face with a lot of uncomfortable questions that you have been trying to avoid and ironically it's the real world so called real world outside which is like an escape you know because in that real world you can try and forget about all the pains and they just go on living life as it is but when you come to the cafe you're actually having a hard conversation with yourself and you come face to face with your memories your various feelings your pain loss anxiety you know so many different emotions so it won't be an exaggeration to say that this whole time traveling cafe thing acts like a therapy acts like a therapy uh, for people which you know uh, sort of and they, when they come out of it their life is improved for the better because like i said the present is not changed they cannot change their present Uh, but ultimately they realize you know they feel lighter by sharing uh, whatever concerns they had with people from their past who have passed away or whatever else is 
uh, happen to them and they generally feel lighter and decide to live a good life for sake of them so overall i would definitely recommend this book it's a beautiful beautiful book uh, full of emotions and there's a lot of pathos and sadness uh, but and the ending is also very sad but like i said towards the end of the book you're filled with a sweet melancholy and you realize the value of life that life is such a valuable thing you don't know you know what will happen tomorrow today it is tomorrow it's just gone so you have to celebrate uh, every moment of your life and just like you know uh, just like a cafe perhaps life is as transient as a cafe so guys uh, that's it for today thank you so much for listening i would try to the amazon link to you know checking out the book in the description the description section you can check out the book Also if you like the video please do press the like button and please do subscribe to the channel as well thank you so much for listening bye for now